Um, our next uh, session is about uh, Linux automation and validation, and it will be presented by Neil Williams. Thanks. So I'm covering an um, introduction to Linaro as well as to Lava, but just to give you some idea, I'm a Debian developer and hence the kilt. That's because of a conference back in Edinburgh 2007. So Debian is part of what we're trying to do with all of these kinds of uh, work within Linaro, within Lava, trying to expose and the, uh, the test protocols out to the community, and this is part of the reason why we're here now. We haven't done a lot with FOSDEM in the past, so I'm going to cover a little, a little about Linaro and what Linaro is, what we try and do, and then go into Lava. So this is a recent group photo. It's actually from uh, our conference in Santa Clara last year. And you can see there's lots of teams, lots of different uh, areas involved in Linaro. We've got the main work on the kernel, tool chain, builds and baselines, virtualization support, which is getting increasingly uh, popular on ARM. There have been a number of talks here at FOSDEM this weekend about uh, QEMU on ARM and KVM on ARM. Uh, those kinds of things are becoming increasingly important. And we've got an enterprise group, a networking group, and then Lava. We're up here, just on the back row, all the way along, uh, in, the, in the horrible light green shirts. <laughs> now, we've actually got a development team across the whole world, so whenever you want to talk to Linaro or talk to Lava, you'll tend to find someone around on our ISC channels, on our mailing lists, 24 uh, hours a day. Whatever time zone you're in, it doesn't make any difference. You've got so many developers uh, involved, and we're rapidly growing still. Uh, we've gone from 90 employees and assignees up to, was that, I think it's close to 300 now. Oh, hold on. There you go. So, Linaro itself is a not-for-profit organization, so many thanks to all the members who paid me to be here. Arm is one main one, there's people up there who are actually um, providing the, the content that allows for Linara to exist. But we've also got a whole range of other members, many of whom will be familiar to anybody who's been involved in Arm work over the years. And Linara was about building the future of Linux. We are thinking about primarily Linux, we're thinking primarily about the future of Arm. So we're looking at Arm v7 and Arm v8. So if you're familiar with any of the old ARM chips, the IPACs were strong ARM, ARM v4. You have the ARM v5, which is the PXAs, the Freedom Box, the, uh, a lot of the little dream plugs and things like that, that were going on with that as well. Um, but we're looking in the future, which is on the Panda boards, Kiwi boards, um, Arndales, all these kinds of boards that are out there, BeagleBone Blacks, uh, things like that, which actually provide the next generation of ARM boards. Now, Linaro is contributing a lot of code to the Linux kernel, mainstream, mainline. If by some measures we're actually the second or third largest contributor uh, of new patch sets to the Linux kernel. So there's a lot of work going on. It's all well and good saying, yeah, okay, the kernel developers over there, they do loads of great work, and they come in and they say, well, there's our patch set, and let's send it up. How do we know, how do we prove to the Linux community, how do we prove to mainline that that code, that uh, patch set, actually does what we thought it does? It might have worked on the developer system. Now, that's where the validation comes in with Lava. We come along and say, well, we're going to deploy those changes onto these boards that we've got available and prove but the patch set does what it's claimed to do and doesn't break anything else. Equally, when you're doing other parts of the code, whether you're working on network drivers or the virtualization support, all of these things need continuous testing, but equally testing for the side effects and for knock-on um, um, changes elsewhere. So you keep on with the same automated test. You add more and more of your changes as the code develops, and you're checking for regressions over time, you're checking for performance over time, you're making sure that the data is there for the developers to look back and say, actually, that, that didn't work, we need to go back and look at that again, before it gets out, even to the point of being included into mainline. 
uh, and before anybody else actually gets to see it. So we get to see all the broken stuff in lava. Um, we get the stuff that doesn't work, and then we have to go back to them and say, what's going on with that? Why, doesn't, why isn't it raising its network interface? Again, um, looking at the Arndales for no particular reason. Um, so what is, what is lava? It's Linaro's way of validating the rest of the work within Linaro. So we take the, the builds that are done, we take the, the changes that have been made for a whole range of different improvements across the kernel, and then we deploy those as a, um, either, there's a whole range of different ways of doing it, either as a pre-built image, or as just a kernel that you download, and you install that on top of a predefined rootFS. You can do it now with NFS. You can do a whole range of different me mechan mechanisms of deploying that next new system onto these boards. And we're doing it to make sure that you can actually test the software and get the results. So we want to have the feedback to the developers. We want to have the, the information going back. The developers all can actually make sure that their hooks, their commit hooks, are set up to uh, initiate test jobs on particular hardware because they're interested in making sure that the, their changes work on the Arndale. But equally, those can then get fed around onto other boards by other teams just as easily. So you can test it on, on a panda and all the rest of it onto there. Lava is a black box. We don't dictate what you do. We will um, we'll come on to later what we actually stipulate, but basically it's just a serial connection that we require to run Lava. Once the board is up and booted with your particular um, build, then it's up to you. You've got a network connection, you've got uh, storage, you've got different um, capabilities that some of these little boards have, and you can use different uh, parts of have it set up in a particular way. And then you can go off and you can download some source code if you want to. You can build a, uh, a test suite, and you can run that test suite natively on the device, get the results off, and send it all back. Or you can just do a simple boot test. A lot of the Android stuff is just a case of, well, here's the kernel. Do I get to the home screen? We don't define what you actually want to run. And we do everything in the open. So I know a lot of the member organizations and a lot of our assignees are used to a world where they have to check everything with their line manager. Can I release this patch to uh, the kernel at all? Can I send this uh, comment up to this particular mailing list? Linaro, part of the reason for us being here is we're separate from all that. We're outside all the little legal teams that want to hammer on the door and tell us not to do things. When we do things, we just put it straight up there. So all our development's out in the open. Um, we're using public Git repositories, we're using Garrett, we're using wikis and IRC and mail lists, and we do everything in those open forums. If you want to know what's going on, come and ask us on IRC, come and ask us in on, on the mail lists, have a look at the code that's going through. It's all there, we're not actually keeping anything back. Now, Lava is there for Linaro, of course, but it's also uh, a service that other people can use, and it's a product that people can install on their own setups. So you can use Lava to validate your own engineering output. That allows you to have your own sets of hardware. In our main Lava Cambridge lab, we have 100 different devices uh, that you can throw different jobs at. Some of them include emulations and um, models and things like that for a lot of the RV8 stuff. But we've got lots of different boards you can throw things at. But you can also set up a lab in your own system. You can close it off if you want to, because um, Lava, when it's used in, uh, when it's used via the, the main Cambridge lab, again, it's all there public. There are some um, particular jobs which are restricted because they are using particular code or whatever. They are down to particular groups. So some of the links for anonymous users might not go through, but in the majority, you can, you can watch the build go through. You can see exactly what the, each actual test job is doing. And therefore, we can do it with CI. So you can just have a commit hook, goes into something like Jenkins, it comes out, and it gives a, uh, an image. It puts the image in the location that Lava can download. Lava goes ahead, 
has a job that runs for that image, puts the, re put the results back, Jenkins picks up the results and puts them back up into its own uh, mechanism. So you've got a summary of the results in Jenkins, but you've got the full detail of all of the results in Lava. We don't make assumptions about the uh, capabilities of the board. We can use special capabilities if the boards have them, but you're just testing the board as is. It's, you're not trying to do anything particularly um, awkward unless you want to. If you want a simple test, the simple test is what you'll get. And then the results themselves, they get uploaded to the server, so that comes up onto our dashboard, and you can filter those to pick out exactly the kind of tests on exactly the kind of boards and exactly the kind of environments that you're interested in, track those over time with our, uh, image reports, which are charts that are tracked uh, and showing your, your progress. You can keep those updated, or well, they, they will update automatically as new jobs come through, but you can keep on refining your, your, uh, your data mining. And then the bundle of the results themselves are just in a big lump of JSON. So the tools, have I switched it off? No. Uh, so, so the tools allow you to download that entire bundle and do your own analysis on it uh, at any time as well. So if you're going to be using Lava, you're looking at submitting a job to a range of devices. You can choose to have one device on its own. You can choose to set up a test that involves more than one device. And you can have one device that's acting as a, as a, as a, set, a server, one that's acting as a client. You can make sure that it's got the right packages installed if you're using a uh, distribution that uses a packaging system. Or you can just go in and say, well, okay, I need to download this source and build it. Well, that's going to take different amounts of time depending on which ones you're doing. So Lava provides a synchronization protocol so that you can make sure that the client is ready when the server is ready. Because there's no point the client starting this test when the server hasn't built the software yet. And you're able to communicate around those groups. You set up a, a multi-node group, and you can pass messages between the boards independently of how they're set up via networking or any other consideration. You can do that. You can set up your own network interfaces and sockets. Yeah, fine. But you can also pass messages like, what is the IP address of that board over there and that board over there? That's important if you're trying to actually set up a networking group. And then there's also the, the support. You can actually have a test job that sets up a SSH server on the board inside the test image. So now you're actually on device. You're using the software that is going to be running in the tests. You can log in and you can actually run the, the commands on the board to try and work out maybe why that particular test is failing. Maybe you need to actually do some um, edits of the scripts that are there on the board, put there by Lava. Do you need to actually work out why is this parser failing? Because you, you'll, you'll often want to uh, write a parser to work out how to translate um, the test results into something that's meaningful. Because they all have different ways of outputting a format in their uh, their results. Each time you run a different kind of test case, you're going to get a different uh, structure of the data. And you need to write those parsers for your particular test cases or borrow them from people who have already done that. And that's uh, on-device hacking is very useful for that kind of situation. So what does Lava require as a board, from the board? If you're going to put a board into Lava, basically it's a serial connection. But it's a serial connection that must be retained and connect, uh, must be connected the entire time of the test. If the, if the serial connection drops, the test job will fail. Now, we get some problems with that with some of the experimental um, RV7 servers that were around. Um, oops. OK. Just one minute. Right. But then. Most, more often than that's not, that's not a particular problem. One of the things we do want to look at is formal support for, uh, for how we interact with a GUI. Um, and the main limitation of a lot of the boards that we've currently got in Lava in the Cambridge office is that they are dev kits. They're not production hardware. Well, one or two of them are production hardware, slightly modded to make sure that we can actually use it. But a lot of it is development boards. And development boards are not designed to be run 
365 days of the year compiling GCC 15 times a day. Some of them end up doing that, and some of them eventually break. So we will find that boards will go offline, boards will suddenly need maintenance. Um, so don't underestimate that if you're using Lava as your own product inside your, your, your own environment. You're going to need someone to go in there once in a while and actually fix the boards and work out what's actually going wrong. Lava will do its best to make sure that the test image itself doesn't harm the, the ability to test on the board because we have a master image in many cases that is sectioned off and separate. So we know that the board can't be bricked, but even so, constant stress testing of development boards, pre-production hardware, eventually something will, will tend to find the deal break. Now, lastly, um, the, the mail links, mailing list here is for extra developments to make it out into a system testing. Because Lava is fine for what it's doing here, but we acknowledge there's a role for getting involved in testing the entire system and then testing systems um, that involve multiple units as well and doing, as I said, about the graphic interaction as well. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much, Neil. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, I, we uh, kind of passed the time. So, oh. uh, but you can come over here and ask him. Uh,